Hello everyone. I have already made few videos on data transfer using UART in STM32. The latest one of them was circular buffer using DMA, interrupt, and idle line detection. Circular buffer was quite good, but it is very complex, and sometimes we might miss the data. Today in this video, I will use yet another but more effective method of data transfer using UART. I have implemented the Arduino like head and tail methods to receive and transmit data. I am using STM32 Cube IDE, and I will recommend that you use it too. So let's start by creating our project in the IDE. I am keeping the baud rate at 115200 and make sure that you enable the interrupt. I am keeping the clock at max frequency. That's it for the setup. Now let's build our code. Before starting, we need to copy some library files into the code. Include the header file. And let's check if there is any error. Let me just change it for F1 series, and done. Let's take a look at some functions now. You can change the size of the buffer here. If you are going to receive large data at once, make it big. For small continuous data transfer, keep it low. Make sure you define your UART handle type here. And we need to put this one, in the interrupt file. This is the function definition for the ISR, that we are going to use, instead of the default one. And next, we need to route the ISR, to the one, written by us. And comment out the default one. Note here that, every time you regenerate the code, you have to comment it out again. Ok guys, let's talk about the functions now. UartRead is going to read the data that is in the Rx buffer. It reads one character at a time. After successfully reading, it will increment the tail by one and returns the character in the decimal format. The head count in the Rx buffer will increment each time there is a new character received in the buffer. This process is interrupt driven. To make sure that the tail is always catching up with the head, we have to read data, as soon as it arrives. Or else, there will be no more space, for the new data. And, any incoming data, will be lost. If you just google the ring buffer, you can check out the Wikipedia page. As you can see here, head increments, when we type in some data. The tail increments, when we read the data. If the first two bytes are already read, the head can overwrite that data. But think of a situation that, we haven't read these first two bytes. Then the process will stop there, and we will lose the last two bytes of the data. That's why I said in the beginning, that, if you are expecting large data at once, make sure the buffer size is big. Or else the head will reach the end and, any further data will be lost. UartWrite function, will write a character, to the TX buffer, 
and increment the head in the TX buffer. Sending data to the UART is again an interrupt driven process and the tail will be incremented after the data is sent. UART send string will send the entire string instead of single character. UART print base prints the number in different formats such as hex, decimal etc. Is data available? Checks whether there is any data available to be read in the Rx buffer. It returns one on success. Wait for, checks for the provided string within the incoming data. It returns the position of the string within the buffer. Initialize the ring buffer first. Inside the while loop, first we should check the data. And if it is available, we will read it and then, write it to the UART again. Let's build the code, and run it. As you can see that, the board rate is set to 115200. Sending single character, and received it too. Pink color, is what we are sending, and black color, is the one that we received. Sending two characters. Let's send the string, hello. Send even bigger string. Make sure this string size, is less than, the size of the Rx buffer. Yup, received it too. So the UART is working irrespective of the length of the incoming data. I will come back to this, in a while. Let's check the, wait for, function now. Here, I want to know the position of the, hello, string in the buffer. And if the position is valid, it will send it to the UART. Build it, and run. If I send some random string, nothing get printed. Now, I will send, hello, and see that, some number is printed on the terminal. If you take a look at the Rx buffer, you will notice that, this is the position, 
where the string, hello, ended. Let's try with some other string. This time, I will send, hell, along with other characters. Nothing on the terminal, as expected. Now same string, but complete hello. And you see, the position is printed. Let's take a look at the buffer again. And yes, it is the position, where hello ended. Next, I want to demonstrate that, this is not a blocking mode function. So, for that, I have to use LED blinking. So, I will receive, and print data. And also, the LED will blink every 100 milliseconds. Let's send some data now. As you can see that, LED is blinking, as it should. Also the data is being written, every 100 milliseconds. Let's change this code a little, and try to print all the data at once. Now, the data is being printed, all at once. This is it guys. This was the working of a ring buffer. If you can contribute to some changes, I am open to suggestions. Make sure you read the data, before the next batch of data arrives, or else, the data will be lost. You can download the code, from the link in the description. Have a nice day.